Hi and welcome to my podcast. My name is Ali Hart and you are listening to Build a Creative Business in a Noisy World. But for the next while, we are delving deeper into something that I'm really passionate about and that is learning how to love ourselves from our brain to our very bones. Um, I have different experts joining me from the wellbeing industry and I really hope you can join me on this journey as we dig a little deeper uh, to learn about ourselves but also just to realize that life is to be lived and how can we reach that capacity by doing internal work, external work and all of the above. I really hope you enjoy the episode. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode in the Inside Out series or from the Inside Out. So today I have Louise from Little Forget Me Nots and um, I've written notes here but I've already had my spiel in my head. So Louise and I have never met and this is why it's always very cool to kind of do these things but I know that she's nervous but um, she looks amazing for those of you that are listening on the podcast I'm not watching on YouTube I have like a painting behind me which kind of reflects the joy and the color in Louise's outfit so um, punch needle I am terrible with um, anything embroidery related so um, punch needle embroidery so it's different workshops but then there's also a whole side a meaningful side to it that we're going to unravel a little bit today and just to get to know the ways but um, I thought it was funny that on the day that I'm interviewing you Louise and this is I just bought um a like travel needle and thread kit because I don't have any in my house anymore isn't that terrible I've managed a year since we moved house and my husband said to me today um, the hem of my trousers is down. I thought I'd better do something about that and I'm also then doing a new workout program and they told me to measure my waist three weeks ago and I was like what do you measure that with so anyway I think that's kind of all very universe related and it's lovely to have you so you're very welcome thank you very much for having me and I hope I cover <laughs> oh no <laughs> it's just a chat it's good. lovely this is just a really cool time to like spotlight people and what they do and um there's so obviously we all know each other we know each other from social media and I probably shouldn't ask you what you um see of me but what I see of you is just this real joyful um kind of playful but also very talented like th- there's the one of the big massive pieces you worked on recently as well yeah well I am um, well I'm still learning my craft I think um any artist they never perfect their skill every day is a skill day over here um but I find embroidery uh it was about five years ago um mm-hmm. just basically I needed something to keep my hands busy and uh, I was I am um, a bit about me I, I am a brave parent and um, I lost my my little boy um just over five years ago and I didn't know where, where to go, what to do, ask for help. I went to counselling and counselling just wasn't for me. Um, I ended up actually counselling the counsellor. I was like yeah. in a strange turn of events. So mm-hmm. I've always had that listening ear um, of, I don't know, flipping and pulling people's um, tragic stories out. And then I was like, oh, goodness, this is getting too much for me. I'm actually grieving myself and I'm here in other people's grief. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I also work with community arts too um I bring artists Ooh. to I know which Up is which is good and, and I've always been the facilitator I've always been like bringing uh, the pottery demonstrator to the community and things like that and um I was in the middle of a workshop and uh, I was doing a woodworking workshop and I wasn't there at all but thankfully I had um I had really, really amazing support around me. And there were the facilitators that was taking the woodworking class. And I, I just felt like I was like hovering over my body. Like I was mm-hmm. doing my work. I love, I love my work. And I would never have like, you say that people sh- should take bereavement leave and things like that. I just threw myself into my work because mm-hmm. you have to forget somewhere. And the, the one of the, the, the facilitators told me to go and find a craft He said, don't stop until you find the thing that you will help you every day. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really understand what it was like to be an artist. Like I was like, because I was always a base of artists because I always worked with them. But I was like, Mm -hmm. how do they do that every day? Like there's the person that goes to test, goes to work. There's the person that, you know, goes to the office to work. There's Mm -hmm. the person that does. And I was like, how do people be an artist? I, I admire artists. And then I kind of just, it just clicked that you have to love 
your art. You have mm-hmm. to love what it brings you and the feeling. So then I, I tried sewing and it wasn't amazing. I have so many disasters. Um, um, and I tried to actually get together a group of women, like brave parents to help um, stitch together like we gowns for stillborns in, um, in the hospital. But it was too emotional. It was just too, it was too emotional. It wasn't for me at that time. And then, but I, I always looked at the embroidery side of things. So this one day I got up and went and bought an embroidery machine. And I was like, I'm making this work for me. I am making this the thing that catches me every day. So it spiraled from that. And then it was too, the embroidery machine's too quick. If you know yourself, like when you're an artist, you want to love the process. process yeah. Yeah. And understand like what, what's a design plopping it into the computer and then go and press print like us uh, so not what art is about mm-hmm. well it is in a different way but you yeah. know it depends on my art so then I start hand embroidery and I wasn't amazed at it like still I'm still very critical of my work I'm sure you're the same like yeah. you think oh, that could be better and I'm kind of like I, I'm starting to take on commissions now and I don't really even photograph take photos of them because I'm like yeah and I'm being told it's amazing and I'm like I'll change by I the think. end of your chat with me, Louise. I'll have you to mm. photograph it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's just, it's one of them things where it's just confidence, really. It is, yes. So then um, I bought my first punch needle and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is like embroidery, your embroidery fix all in one. Get it done, get it done. It's not, it can happen so instantly. So I started on that bandwagon and there was no supplies in Northern Ireland or really in the UK. And I was like, oh my, this is so easy to do. How can nobody really get all of these supplies? So um, yeah, I just I the more I was talking about it on social media, people started asking me for supplies. I was like, can I do this as a business? And then I was doing my embroidery machine again. And it was kind of more like a hobby um, before I had my last son. And then I had a queue out my door. Just, I was heavily pregnant. I had a queue out the door. It was the month of Christmas. And I was like, I have to change my way. I have to say, this isn't my hobby anymore. This yeah. is actually people are re- relying on my service. So I went off maternity leave for a few weeks. I had to rethink of it. I went, okay, I'm, I'm making this a business. I have to make this a business for my own self because I'm hearing so many people's stories yeah. throughout meeting people. And then... And then that led me on to the little forget me nots trust. So was that just before you you tell us about that, which I definitely want to hear about. So was that you became a supplier yeah. then for people, or was that you making? Was that you supplying the punch needle? Yeah. So that was me supplying kind of like the yarns and mm-hmm. the needle, the punch needles and the hoops and the fabric. And then lockdown hit, and then yeah. it was. I need to know how to do this, but how, how does all of these combinations? Because if you write into punch needle, you'll be given a three pound punch needle and then people buy this three pound punch needle and they don't know how to work it. And yeah. I was always thought to myself, there's an easier way. There is yeah. an easier way. So yeah. And then you're, because it's, it's like any type of textile craft, you have to have the right needle. You have to have the right thread. You've got mm-hmm. the right frame and the right fabric and yeah it's the exact same if you don't have the right fabric to go with your needle or go with your yarn you're not going to it's not going to look nice yeah so I've kind of went in at beginner level nice chunky yarn to produce really lovely cute designs that yeah. you can do it yourself and you can display it yourself and that's kind of and then you were selling kits her. was that it was that the yeah okay Brilliant. so so oh my goodness like I then it, it was it was me and my own and then I had to check on somebody and me and her were just like <laughs> talking about being thrown in the deep end. We were like, so we were so excited that we were getting so many orders, but it yeah. was like so repetitive. We were, so overwhelming, isn't it? Yes. 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 Yeah. And when you've the box and you you start from, and you're doing those packs, you're like, this is amazing. But then by the 40th, you're like, I actually can't think anymore. Don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and then people actually then, find that it was helping them so much that they were buying them in their bulk and I remember there was this one there was this one order that kind of just broke us and I was like okay we need to stop for today there, this woman had bought one for everybody in the audience in her house and we were like oh my goodness and we were so afraid of like missing a kit I know and a ball of yarn and a needle and we were like oh my goodness I, okay let's for me it was the today. um 
it was so warm during the lockdown for us. It was, well, my husband could help me because I couldn't bring anybody in. And it was the drying out of paint was my stress. I was <sighs> like, I had to then start telling people to keep this in a cool place because, you know, you'd get kids in a workshop and they'd be like, my black has all dry so yeah I know I know exactly what you mean but then you don't want to be resentful because you're so happy and proud that someone is purchasing that is then your stuff it's mm-hmm. just the comp because you're going through in at the deep end generally a business evolves into this yes but you have to go to yourself right if everybody's running let's run but you're <laughs> still figuring line. it out yeah <laughs> so then so, you're yeah. saying about the little forget me not trust so it's a charity yeah. that you've found it is that right Yes, it's actually, so it was established uh, at the beginning of lockdown and then lockdown hit. And so nothing really kind of happened too much with it, but we were fundraising for it. Everybody got behind the ethos of it and that was using your hands to try and help help your mind really. Mm -hmm. But I was meeting so many people along my journey that I was, that I was telling that I'm doing this and I was standing up and saying, I'm doing this because yeah. I need this for my mental health. I need to do embroidery. I need to serve people this way and tell people that it's okay that you can do this. You can be creative and still have and still like be happy and and like find your happiness again in a different way. You'll never be the same person again. Mm-hmm. It's not a fix for that life but you can get creative and become happier Mm -hmm. so I was finding and meeting a lot of brave parents along my journey over the past five years and I all I really wanted to turn around and tell them this is how you do it this Mm -hmm. is how you just buy a kit or you do this or you do that and I couldn't I I, firstly I I couldn't I couldn't pay for everybody I met to go and give them a kit I was like how am I going to help that family and it, how, how can I help this family? So this evolved into establishing the little forget me not stress. Yeah. So now when I see a person that comes into my workshop or another artist meets another family that's in the same session, then we I can say, I have support for you. I have a mm-hmm. bank of art therapists that can take you through a journey to hopefully help you unlock or discover a new way to be you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so... It, we're at the very early early stages. We've only uh, found out that we are now officially a charity about about a month ago. Okay. So we're like really really happy with that, and that was a completely big mass, massive hill to get over to. But you know, we're here. Well, I was going to um, say the sort of practical side. How do you like? Where do you start with all of that? Do you just think of a uh, name, and then has it been quite a crazy? Like I don't even know how to start with that. I, it's just been a kind of well I was because I, before like when I, I was doing it as a hobby I, w- I was called tailor it because I started okay. tailor and I was doing embroidery and I was kind of like yeah be creative and write a name on your whatever but now I was kind of like no I want people to do this as a way to like actually be creative mm-hmm. and mean it yep. and use use their hands to help their mind mm-hmm. and I wasn't able to do that with an embroidery machine because like you know I honestly I, can't I, think of worse by the way that is just not how I'm programmed <laughs> embroidery machine the thought yeah of, I made my own set of curtains once I know it's not the same but uh well, just after we were married and um, I still use it the curtain but I will never uh, I'm just not that person I really try but I'm just not I can't I don't have the patience anything machine yeah. like Whereas it's um, too, it's it's just too structured. And you're, not, you're kind of have to have. But you're lucky you can do up. both. You can do both. Yeah. Which is good. <laughs> yes, which is why I'm kind of, kind of. There's some people that just won't open the door to crafts and using their hands. They're kind of like, no, I'm not that person. I'm not going to do it. So I'm like, okay, well maybe you can like personalize a t-shirt or a jumper or whatever you want. So I'm trying to be there. You know business you know yourself you're trialing and our see what what will work well, so can we yeah. jump just quickly then to just or maybe just back actually so I noticed um the jumpers the sweaters are you and you at the midst you've got some merch which is very cool um <laughs> do you do you personalize those yourself when someone buys one yes a sweatshirt yes so That's it's so a blank cool. it's a, yeah it's a blank canvas really so if you want I do want it. one I do want mine yeah <laughs> so, so it's just it's just something somebody something to call whatever you call yourself like I I do these like retro like you're very cool like I love the whole feel yeah like it's like a a camel color isn't it 
Yeah, so it's like, yeah, sandy camely colour and just with a darker brown. And it's just like kind of, I, I didn't want a big bright thing because I did bright before. And I don't know, it just is kind of a wee bit low key because you can wear it with like, you can dress it up, dress it down. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just thought it was cool. I know there's, I, I had punch later on mine. Um, then I opened it up and then I got, it was hilarious. So I got two orders for two hooker jumpers. <laughs> I actually was like, oh my goodness so obviously they're crocheters and things yeah, and I was like yeah, I yeah. love people's creativity I like know. they're going to rock them yeah. and I'm like I love That's this awesome I'll have to get for my girls actually that work for me um and then so that I, that probably ties in quite nicely with like because this series is from the inside out and identity and things like that like is the was that a real um decision so little forget me not we obviously now know and I'm so sorry that you've been through like a crazy journey um and I think it's amazing that you have actioned doing something different to deal with grief in a really practical way um from my own experience as a community artist and working with social services um I and even speaking to Waymaker Therapy who was on last week he's an, a play therapist I always Law, like when hands are busy the heart is open that's what I always felt when I was working with yeah. young people with adults so I think it's amazing um that you have because it's not easy and as you said like business then becomes a whole other realm it's not just creativity and grief it's like whoa I have to actually like ma- put these packs together but um is was the uh, so obviously uh, identity and remembering people and remembering or, or acknowledging life uh, so the simple act of like a name on a sweater, I take it that was, was that very natural for you? Is that just all part of the whole um, little forget-me-nots and Louise like branding yeah. as such? Or was it, or did you feel like, well, how am I going to do that? Did it feel just very natural to do something like that? Yeah, I think from people that I've met in my journey, everybody is something, everybody mm-hmm. has to be something. Even if you haven't found what you're good at, you know, even if you're like, I have a few friends that look at me and go, how do you do that? Every-? Like, do you just sit out in your workshop and twiddle yarn all day? And I'm like, <laughs> I wish. No, actually, I wish. <laughs> but no. The last time I did that was I did not know how long ago. But I still am. Like, I, I am an artist. I a know creative, artist, yeah. But yeah, and and like even my mum, like she's envious of me because my mum's always taken like, the hard route she's always served people yeah but it's it's different in different ways like at the minute um like my, my mom and dad they're they're funeral directors mm-hmm. and so we're we see death in so many different forms and then people just lose direction after mm-hmm. something significantly has happened to them and but there's still always something and yes you can oh, yeah. you can make it fun and and be a hooker or you can make it fun and be a mum or something but then there's other things that people are going through difficult times in their lives and they want to wear it like um like I had uh, I put it on my story yesterday and everybody thought it was hilarious but one of my friends bought one and it was called difficult woman yeah but the the same girl is amazing Mm -hmm. and I would be like Mm -hmm. how can you tell call yourself that but that's what she feels that she is but also to have balls to turn the yeah. world out every day I'm like her bloody you yeah, know yeah that's so, wow. yeah, I love just, that that everyone is something that's so true and even um with you were saying there you were pregnant and then so you've a uh, little boy do you say yeah I have my so I have my eldest is Chloe okay she is seven and then I have and um, after that um it will it would have been Ruben and um, yeah. and he would have been coming six and then I have Lyndon and then I have Jude so I Lyndon have, is a cool name. Yeah. I know it's my maiden name. I so kind of wanted to keep that in the family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I feel with the kids for me, it's always it's trying to tell them we're going through AQE, you know, nonsense. And for anyone's listening, I've spoken about this actually in the last podcast as well with Eileen. But um, it's an exam that you take between schools, uh, between primary school and grammar or secondary school in Northern Ireland, specific to Northern Ireland. But we've already been through it with our 12 year old and it is what it is. Uh, but it's like forgetting that but it's those things where you're trying to tell your children that they're they're going to be something and it doesn't matter about this mark as well so I love that you're saying about everybody is something 
Yeah, I, I do try, to, you know yourself, you've got a young family and like my eldest is seven and she's only starting to really put together the pieces of life mm -hmm. and, you know, she's coming home and she's telling me, oh, this person said this and this. And I'm like, well, you have two options in life. You mm -hmm. could either react or go and find something to keep your your mind occupied yeah. so you don't have to worry about her words or their words or yeah. you know so we always draw our paint or something in this house uh, chloe's not really into punch needle i know devastating <laughs> same but as me my, none of mine paints <laughs> <laughs> but my my son he's only five he loves it he yeah, loves love coming that. out to my workshop he goes Mommy, I love coming out here. This makes me feel so relaxed. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh. So even to be able to enough. voice that, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And a five-year-old, like it just it makes me like have all the feels. I'm just like, yeah, you can come out here anytime, but just don't talk. We're not allowed to talk when we're here, okay? <laughs> just just make something. <laughs> and then we'll talk about it when we go in. <laughs> Hold so, your feelings yeah. for now. Then tell me later. Yeah. <laughs> um, and obviously the the like deep grief and sadness is one part but you are bubbly even like you're saying about your outfit like wearing bright colors your color of your kitchen is the same color as my last kitchen's bringing me joy looking at it but um is it, that just something you were like talking about everybody is something did you because self-acceptance is really important for me and it's something that I want women to know and to love themselves from their brain to their bones with social media it can be really crippling and actually quite scary do you feel like it's just like this is it this is my, ch I don't mind what anybody says or how do you well, feel I, with that? I go, if people are going to talk, give them something to talk about. Yeah. That's, that's it. They're going to talk about you. Like, I, I, I don't really care if people like me or take me or whatever. They're yeah. not my people. Yep. People, my customers come over and they come for a workshop. They get in the same wavelength as me. And that's how I vibe. Like, mm -hmm. I can't, if people like even in social media, like there is, there's like loads of influencers out there. I believe that I can only connect with the people that understand. I understand them and they understand me. And I'm like, yeah, there's some influencers that just, you, can, you can't. And you, that's like unnatural because like there's a lot of people that would throw products at people and be like, mm -hmm. oh, advertise this. And I'm like, you know, you want the best for your product because mm -hmm. you've made it. Yeah. So, you know, get to the person that's going to highlight your Add product. the value. The best. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, there's a, so and, and also on like, I'm always afraid to like send products to influencers because like there is a fine line. I and, haven't, but, yeah, I know I've done maybe once or twice and we, we were on the verge of doing a deal with someone and then we didn't. And I'm really glad that we didn't. And even this month marks our six month anniversary of no adverts. OK, so, OK, so that's another level. I know that's another level. And like I could be I could probably be tripling my income by doing it but it just I just they don't feel right at the minute for me yeah yeah I well there's this another side of the whole business thing that I just don't understand if it's like oh goodness but I love seeing like I would only follow people that if I go on and they inspire me I'm like yeah I have to but I block not block but I mute a lot of people because mm -hmm. I can't if if their energy isn't like I, I'm okay. I like if I if I look at something that makes me sad, I'm not going to be all like, yeah, "Oh, you just." I try my best just to follow the people that are on my wavelength, which is hard because my wavelength is pretty extreme. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. like the, the ultimate optimist. Like if somebody comes to me with a project, I'll just flip it into this bigger project. Like I, I always, I just can see so much vision. And like my mommy just is amazed, and my dad's just like. Wow. But yeah, yeah, it's just, I think you just have to um, chat and like making conversations like most really meaningful. And I, I really believe that too. Like the people in your life, you should really have them to like encourage you to do so, so much. Like keep, keep it alive. Like don't be around people. It's going to like pour water on your fire. You know, yeah. you really need to keep that lit. Yeah, I agree. And it's, it, I do believe as well more and more that the, the five people you spend your most time with are your big influencers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's literally my family members. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, but 
but I, I really would love, I, like my daughter, you say that because when I was younger, I always wanted to be an archaeologist. I don't know why. I do oh. not know why. I always wanted to be it. I was really interested. In it. And like I said to uh, Chloe, I'm like, Chloe, what do you want to be? Which on a flips every week. And I'm like, she doesn't know what she wants to be yet. So I'm trying to show her that you don't have to go down the whole like go into the office you can have yeah you can have your family life and you can be creative you can do a lot it really the world is your oyster yeah yeah and happiness yeah. just knowing who they are like as you say like being everyone is something knowing who you are and what you like yeah. and don't like you know just I try to say to Elijah our oldest he was eating this chicken curry because his friend was eating it and I knew it was burning the face off him and it's trying to say to him like, you you don't need to. You don't need to like it. You don't like the chicken curry. That's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know, but then there's the fine line of, oh, can you? We're good. I think we're good. Okay. Are we good? Sorry. But then there's the fine line of being overly outrageous. <laughs> but then you have to be like that to kind of experience who you are because Chloe, she is a bit over the top sometimes, but like isn't, isn't all kids. So I yeah. like the sound of Chloe. I like the sound of she Chloe. Is. She's she's a fun girl. Um, and so your line, which we we had a bit of a giggle about at the beginning, um, is you. It's helping others. You help how, using, fibers. using fibers, using fibers to help others. To yeah. help others, yeah. Which is a great line that you agreed with, and you're like, I've said that somewhere. <laughs> um, it's a brilliant tagline. Um, do you, you just tell me a little bit about the workshops then? Because we're now able to do in person again. Yeah, so the amazing. options that people have when they see you, and this this can be anybody. This isn't um, necessarily bereaved parents or people. This is yep. you helping other people to just basically you just tap into who you are with creativity, don't you? Yeah, yeah, this is coming together. Like last week we had a, there was two girls starting the big school and they just had all of their aunties, their mums, their grannies oh. over for a workshop and it was amazing. And we had the best crack, like yeah. coming along to a workshop that myself and then Jackie May over the Copper Otter, we do a punch and weave workshop. And it's just great looking at different types and different ways that textures can work. But we, uh, but the private workshops, because you know the people in it, yeah. is just the crack is 90 you can't you, you really can't explain it because everybody's on the same line everybody's learning and there's people get it and then there's people that don't get it and they're like oh what am I doing wrong so you know everybody has their different but everyone comes out with a product which is really cool yeah 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 they come out with the product they 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 lay well because we don't want them to be going with something that they don't like so we do try our best to get them as you know crafted it yeah. but then there's there's the couple in the workshop that then teched it like one of the wee girls she she tagged me on her tiktok that she made of her punch needle and but the rest of them didn't the they loved it but they didn't really pick it up yeah so there's there's then we you know there's then we nuggets that you just have to go it's not for everybody come try it but when well, you get most it, people will probably still say, so it's like me last week, I had a workshop, that was my first in-person one. And I've now a new member from uh, to my online teaching subscription because of it. So there's just that thing of like, everybody will experience it different. But I, I imagine the same as yours, they'll still say, well, that was class. I didn't think about anything, only what was in front of me or how you were yeah. guiding me. And Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Like, because they they love it. They're so interested in doing it. But it isn't for everybody. It's like I've tried knitting. Mm -hmm. Oh goodness, I've tried knitting a hundred times, but I still haven't finished anything. But yeah. the process is class. But you know, I, I'm not going to pick. I'm not going to pick it up. No. It's really what. It really, really what is what floats your boat. Really. So tell me then as well, just because I am totally ignorant to the whole craft, right? Like I really am. Just and as well, people will be interested. So punch. So is it a, that's those circle things that you see? Also, the only arty person in my family was my great. It was my grandmother who I never met. Um, so we have some of hers, which are embroidery, so it's different. But tell me what that looks like. You're saying about the circle. Is it one of those things and then someone punches the needle in through? Like I'm so... Pleased. Yeah, well, punch needle is a wee bit more um, complicated than just normal embroidery because you okay. have to stretch your fabric. Yes, you have to stretch your fabric with, um, with hand embroidery, but it's more... Um, it, it's uh, The fabric has to be a bit more... 
like are you aware of any fabrics like Ada or things like that no. or, okay 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 right okay so you're you talking like, layman's terms layman's terms that's right I mean. so you when you're doing a painting you stretch your canvas yep that's what um, I was thinking when you said stretch yep yeah so oh goodness hold on you're okay so you're pulling the fibers then yes so I'm pulling the the I'm pulling the um the fabric which is called monk's cloth mm-hmm. and um so the same way that you would be stretching your canvas and um it has to be so stretched so perfect because if you have it and if you have it loose then it's not going to like hold the the you know the fibers in place and then you just get your punch needle and then you start punching into this into the holes in the in okay. the canvas in your terms but fabric like monk's cloth in my terms and people th- said to me how does this stay in and I don't I don't know because it is like magic because with hand embroidery you have to cut like a length and then yeah. you have to like wrap it around so you can get that theory but with monk's cloth you're going in and out of the same or with punch nail you're going in and out of the same hole and to try and tell a complete beginner that it's okay I've had a couple of girls actually freak out going oh my goodness this is going to fall out like how is it going to be fixed I'm like okay I don't know, but it just does the process. It just does the, and is it yeah, set up? It sits above the pro- it sits above the fabric. Is that right? Yeah. What's so the really cool it. thing that you made? Then I know I referred it at the start, but that huge wall hanging, which was like red. Did it say yes or something on it? Did I see this? Not that, like, what did you have? Massive one. What's one of the biggest ones you've done? Okay, um, I've done um, probably about like a, a four foot by two foot. And was that a commission? Um, it was so funky. Yeah, that, yeah, that was a commission. Um, but there's so there's the tuft side of it, and mm-hmm. then there's the flat side of it. And because embroidery is, uh, well, punch needle is like embroidery. It's it's only for decorative purposes. But if you were actually going to use it, then you um, the tuft is like a carpet, so you could actually wow. make your own yes. like bath mats and things with it. That's why it looks so, so cool. And the red, there's something yeah. about the red is kind of like seventies. Or you can you you do writing sometimes too, don't you? Or like letters. Yeah, ladders. Ladders is really good. Uh, ladders is really easy to to do. Well, it's, uh, there's a lot of cut work involved in it, but it's easier to get it defined when you're doing punch needle. But then I have my tucked and gun, which is a completely different like realm because it's so quick uh-huh. and it kind of just like goes off the um, the Richter skill. Like it's just so quick, but it's really satisfying to watch. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's your tucked and gun gets the job done really quick, but you have to be. Um, you you just have to be more perfect in what you're sculpting and things. Okay. So yeah, it like it's so once you get into it, and it's such a fun craft. But there's a couple of girls that are now going to go and actually make bath mats for themselves, and okay. you know just let their creativity go crazy. It's just lovely. It's lovely to see. Yeah. And what would you do? You guide people. So say there is someone who you've met or had the conversation has come up and it, it is the the bereaved side of it. Because I'm just thinking about my mom and um, mom didn't go to counselling. My mom would definitely have been like you were and would be the one counselling the counsellor. Like my mom was just always that person in our family who the family rings or if there's crisis like she's very good um but like so if she came she would love and just thinking she would absolutely love it would you encourage someone to make it like meaningful or a name of someone or a heart or is it just do you basically come in and you're like the easiest thing you can do right now is a heart or a box and this is how to lead you is there a format that's because people freak out about how simple it is Mm -hmm. so i'm like please just pick the heart <laughs> please, because you need to get the concept of it and then you can go wild. <laughs> okay. so make, yeah. Start small because you don't want to get browned off. You don't want to go, this isn't working. Oh my goodness. Start with small, something small, crack that and be so proud of your new skills yeah. and then go and search the internet about and get inspiration for your next Mac. So Brilliant. I try my best to get them the right tools the right theory behind it because you do as i said at the beginning it's like it's like chemistry you need all of the right yeah tools in place to make it a successful pro- project or it's just gonna it's not gonna work it's you'll be you'll it'll not be the best project that you make yeah. so start with the right tools like i sell monk's cloth which is pretty expensive but then i also sell an alternative 
turn as well, like yeah a, a, a something that's a bit cheaper which if you have a wee bit of experience it's good to use that okay but it's a wee bit more plasticky but it's half the price as the monk's cloth but I I, I prefer using the monk's cloth because it's just easier I don't yeah. know you know yourself well uh, like well I do cheap. know myself but I would say I'm a classic case of someone who will wing it like you will I remember someone put up another artist who put up about their tubes you know and like um these tubes that they were like getting something to get the paint out. And I was like, I'm the person that cuts it, squeezes it to yeah. the top, like uses anything that I need if I can't find a paintbrush or something else. So um, I, I appreciate how measured you have to be. It's a bit like one of the um, females that I mentor is a resin artist. And similarly, there's a bit of science behind it. You know, like she, you have to have things properly together to make the product. Yeah, yeah, it will do the job if you don't, because like, there's a lot of, when I first started, everybody told me to buy Ada cloth, and I was like, I'm buying this, and it is not doing the job that I want, mm -hmm. and especially, I was kind of thrown in the deep end, somebody asked me to do uh, um, a workshop with older people, because they look, it looked easy online, Yeah, but the with older people, you know yourself working in the community, their hands yeah, are just a bit more delicate, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, and they couldn't get in the fabric. And I was like, well, that's not the same fabric that I used. And it was really easy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then sight, too, is a really big thing. A lot of older people yeah. can't see where they're going, like can't see what they're kind of embroidering. So I've learned so much working with different people. And then we, we were saying about, like, if somebody comes in and they are looking at it from, uh, they're trying to see me, I've inspired them to come to a class or something. And I feel that they do need a wee bit of extra support where the little forget me nots trust comes in is that when we're able to afford the support, then we'll put a call out to say, I'll just say it's Joe Blogs. I'll say Joe Blogs. We have, we're able to support your, you or your family members now um, and give you, offer you up to 12 sessions of art therapy to take you through. Because I do believe when somebody asks for help, like why would you turn them away it's mm -hmm. like that's a really big thing that's a big pillar in their life that they've asked for help and then getting nowhere that's just going to make even more go down that dark route even more when nobody's actually helping mm -hmm. so yeah well that's it's amazing uh it's not even amazing it's admirable it's class to uh, be able to speak to people like you who it's just so much more than you said yeah, just punching needle. it's just uh, having um like a, a real purpose behind and a drive and and also connecting with people so for me I would have worked a lot with young people learn disabilities and we're trying to like figure out how I can bring that back I would have ran the free workshops before so in schools I did one a month and loads of schools but um and in some in special schools and different things but it's like how can we bring that back in a different way just because it's in your heart. You want you want to do more, don't you? It's like yeah, yeah. I know it is. It, it, there's a fine line too. Um, I as I said, like I work with uh, another charity that tries to sustain traditional skills. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm best. I'm always trying to look at how Northern Ireland has grew, uh, has grew where it is now, and I do think that it does come back down to community arts, community yeah. crafts, and. If it wasn't for that, there wouldn't be as so much resilience in Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. Like we relied heavily on using our hands to talk through our problem. Yeah. Not that we knew, nobody knew it, but like way back in like the olden days, like there was so many fisher fishermen around, along the lock shore and they didn't really care where what village they came, mm -hmm. they had to do the job. Mm -hmm. The job was done. Mm -hmm. And like there was so there's so much more in Northern Ireland has to give. And it's just, it's about actually just being vocal and saying it's okay to still use your hands to yeah. like get over life's difficulties. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Do you know, actually I was grounded in cross community arts was basically where I was a community artist. So with the traveling community and then with lots of different, the council and different things. And it was brilliant. I actually wonder what's happening with that at the minute with COVID. Oh, well, uh, well, probably I, no I funding. Really... there's probably no funding for a lot. Yeah, there is a lot. Now, there is funding coming in about like um, mental mental health, tackling mental health. But it's how you, you spin it and how like I know yeah. um, like the Arts Council and things would try not to fund counselling. Mm -hmm. But if you look, do it in an alternative way that I'm trying to approach it, then you probably could get a 
some funding. I don't quote me on that, but yeah, you know, it's just like um, looking at it from a different perspective. Getting so, so you were saying you were the one. Sorry to interrupt you. The so you would have been the facilitator. So would you have been at the play resource and all those places like I would like just trying to use scrap for <laughs> for workshops? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, just. I, well, I, I've been like working as a, a coordinator for like, oh goodness, well, like from my early 20s and I would have just tried my best to get inspiration from somewhere. But my 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 projects were always the extreme projects. Like yeah. everybody was like, Louise, you don't, you just have to do this. And I was like, but I can do this too. <laughs> Positive there, she you is know? optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, you know, you might as well, like, if you're going to spend a pound, you might as well try and make it five pounds spend. You know, it was, it was always, yeah, I was always trying to like look at other different perspectives, always in the play resource center, things like that to try and make a bigger project. I don't know why it is. I don't know why I'm like this. It just happens. (laughs) That's okay. I think that that's what people need. We need that. We need the visionaries. We need people who, and also people that commit to it. Because as a friend says to me, I have all the ideas that she says about herself, but I don't follow through. And I, whereas I look at her and think she does, but she said, I'm a perfect example of someone who, uh, who does follow through with ideas, but then I'm not always a good finisher. So, you know, we don't always have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think if you do get funding for something, you kind of have to finish it. Kind of like <laughs> yeah. you're made to. I definitely like, when it's that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mosaics, though, I have to say no to. I was asked about a mosaic recently and I was like, I could try, but that's just not me. That's not me. Yeah, yeah. You have to have your limits. Like when people do approach you, like you could do it, but you're kind of like, I'm not going to put my 100% into that. No, and you, know. Know, you want to enjoy the project and the process too like you really yeah. do yeah so tell me then just before we wrap up and and we've this is a, a case of two halves so I'm in the back of my mind just praying that the first half which was amazing has recorded <laughs> onto my um onto my dodgy laptop but um what is the next step I know you've got some things in the pipeline for little forget-me-nots okay well I am trying to cuss of covid kits were a thing it was yeah. it was only kits now I have to like get my head into gear and look at it a different way and I'm now I have been asked about wholesaling kits so Amazing. it's about it's it's just a different like it's a different path that I'm going into now yep. and I, I I didn't choose it but you know if the opportunities are coming then I'm going to be like oh goodness I also embroidery is growing too so I'm thinking about getting a sister for Batsy the embroidery machine which is great Class. so um yeah and then regarding the little forget-me-nots trust I, I I'm just trying to um get a bit of a what we can do over the next year to cool. support families yeah. in in Northern Ireland uh so uh, next month is infant loss awareness month which is mm-hmm. a huge month for people it's very loud it's a, a bereavement people shy away from it other people are quite vocal and like to share their story so it's trying to get people to come and either if they feel comfortable share that story to make Northern Ireland and the support services aware that we need support yeah. there needs to be more support and more counselling more ac- accessible support so that's where I hope Little Forget Me Nots Trust can be a bit of an advocate to it right. um, we're finalising our fundraising kind of for for that and we're hoping to do like a 10k a day month walk so oh well, I can get I can get into that that's something I can yeah. get involved with and also Walker I was thinking run, about whatever um I had a print I don't know if we have any of it left of um it was two elephants there's a mummy elephant and then a little baby one and it was uh it's a friend Karen who lost a little baby Elijah so he was called Elijah we elephant Elijah so um I give a portion of that to the children's heartbeat trust with every seal yeah, yeah but because we took a lot of prints down I'm just like my hand, mind's going around I'm like if you're fundraising what could I give you so keep me in mind for that maybe there's a little polar bear paint thing maybe something like that you could auction yeah 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 things like yeah and it's just about businesses that understand the value of yeah. having an alternative way of um 
of helping people's minds like I think reach when- out to who you know like you're very good at giving value like don't be afraid as me in the mentoring role but don't be afraid to reach out to people who you do follow and follow you and because you do give so much value and joy on even a feed so don't be afraid yeah. to ask I know, I know, I know. That that's a big thing. You always are afraid. You just, especially if people have given before too. But I am hoping that um, that people, it's it's just about word of mouth too. You know yourself, it is the best form of advertising. And then also because we are so fresh, um, we can't give support as yet. It's mm-hmm. just we have to rely on the funding then to be able to work up a project then to support. So mm-hmm. this year we've supported ten brave families. We're That's hoping to wonderful. support 10 brave families for the next five years. So we're just working up money or funding to try and do that That's for next absolutely spring. absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's magical. Well, thank you for your time today. Um, it has been fab. Where can people find you? Okay, so I'm on Instagram a lot. Yeah. For some reason, Facebook just doesn't really give me oh, all of no. my messages. It's yeah. just, I, I just don't get it at all. Um, so just at Little Forget Me Not and it's it's n-o-t-s not k-n-o-t-s so yes so little forget me not and if you have any questions please 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 just pop me a message yeah brilliant and your website you have a link tree on there haven't you which is a way people can find is that what you when i click yeah, on your profile i think it's the website I think it, I think I have a, a, a link to my product at the minute on, on the website, but I need to get a link tree. Technology of me. Oh my goodness. It's trying, this is what I mean by business, is trying to do every part of it. Yeah. It's like, ah. Um, and is there yeah. anything else you just want to say to people about, like, I think you're already, we can tell you the thirst for life, but is there anything on that note? Just always, I always love to reassure people that there is help. Just always ask for help. And even if it's starting with one of your friends to offload somewhere ask them for a coffee just always help but also i want to say thank you for giving me this opportunity ollie oh, it is, don't be worrying it is awesome. lovely and i love following you and your work and i just love this all yeah you're talking about you and you're crazy you know they're looking at one here <laughs> i will well might we're as well. in it together saying, they're going to talk you might as well give them something to talk about talk about yeah brilliant well thank you and thanks everyone for watching and listening and um, hopefully it'll be seamlessly stitched together by Ruth um, and that was my faux pas for not saving to the right thing but I'm hopeful that the universe wants this to be out there and thanks again Louise so I will see you and hear you can hear me on the other side <laughs>